In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair this Mimi 801 vintage computer. This repair is taking a lot longer than expected. The machine was badly damaged when it was shipped to me so I spent some time trying to get the case at least usable and uh, since then it's been a kind of an uphill struggle with this. There's been uh, many faults, uh, bald um, broken tracks, um, a lot of uh, failing ICs and um, it's really been uh, a case of going through it incrementally starting uh, with the uh, decoding of the memory to try and get the machine the Z80, Z80 based machine trying to get the Z80 to read the ROM contents trying to get it to access the RAM there were quite a number of faults in the memory decoding and um, finally got it to the point where I mentioned in the previous video that it would at least try to uh, get to the point where it was trying to boot from the floppy disk. However, one um, thing I kind of glossed over there was it's not really doing that very reliably. So what I'm going to do is try and boot this up. This has been off overnight and uh, so it's completely cold and I'll show you what's required to get this to try to get to the point where it's accessing the part of the code where it's trying to um, boot from the uh, disk. There is a disk in the uh, drive, I've only got drive A connected, drive B is disconnected. Um, I've got power going to both drives, so they will both spin. Um, but what I'm going to do is push the read write head away from the home position and when we power this up, the read write head should drive to the home position. So I'll move the camera so hopefully you can see that. I can't get everything into the shot uh, at once unfortunately, um, but you'll see what's going on with the uh, state of the boot process. Okay, I don't know if you can see the read write head. That's just the uh, copper shielded part. We'll get the monitor. I'll turn the lights off so you can see the monitor. And um, this is powered up. The machine, the uh, computer isn't. So we'll power this up. Now you see it's coming up with Mimi 801. The disk drive is spinning, you probably can't see it with the light out, but then it stops. But the read write head hasn't moved on the disk drive. So if I do that again, turn the computer off, turn it back on. Notice once again we're only getting Mimi 801 showing on the screen. To get it to the point where it's trying to boot from the floppy disk, that's when it's trying to access the floppy drive controller, what I have to do is leave it running for probably 60 seconds, two minutes. So I'll do this in real time so I'm not, you're not missing anything. And um, then I have to power it off for maybe 10, 15 seconds and then power it back up. So we'll try that now, see if that's been long enough. So power it off wait a short time power it back up so still hasn't been going long enough we'll leave it running for a little while longer it is quite warm in here as well it's about uh, 26 27 degrees so um, this takes a lot longer when it's cold Okay, we'll try that. So, still not going long enough. So this is um, what it's been doing fairly consistently. It takes quite a long time to get it to the point where it will boot up but once it gets to the point where it will boot, it's fairly reliable in terms of if you turn the power off, wait a few seconds and power it back on. Notice now that it's suddenly come up. I didn't do anything there, it just suddenly got into this state. We heard the head solenoid on the drive. The drive still hasn't gone to the home position, but notice we're now getting the message on the screen saying insert disk in drive A. But I didn't do anything just then, it just runs for a while then it will do that. If we now power this off, wait a few seconds and power it back on, chances are the message will come back up 
asking us to insert the disc. It's getting further than it does when it's cold. So we'll power this back up and this time you can see the message comes up. Uh, if I try pressing the B key to try and get the machine to boot, it does go through the correct process and it tries to access the drive, but the drive head still isn't going back to the home position. If I now actually reset the machine, so I'm going to the reset button's not um, plugged in, but if I short out the two reset pins, it resets the machine, we get the Mimi 801. But notice it doesn't try to access the drive. In fact, it's not the drive it's not trying to access, it's the drive controller I see. So we'll power this back off. Power it back on. And so now it's stopped showing the message. It will eventually start showing the message again, but this is how it's been behaving. It's um, very flaky and intermittent, but once it starts showing that message, the keyboard works, it will ac uh, accept uh, keystrokes. Turn the lights back on. So clearly there's something that it's not at all happy with. So what I'm going to do to start, I've seen this sort of behavior before on other machines, so I've got a reasonable idea what it might be. If I just tilt the camera down, okay, down here we have the floppy drive controller IC. So this is uh, an FDC1797, it's a very common type of controller for this era of machine. And um, they're usually fairly reliable, but they do have two power rails going to them. One's the plus 5 volt rail and one's the plus 12 volt rail and they really do not like having one or other of those rails missing and having the other one applied. So one of the problems with these uh, MOS devices, they really don't like um, having one of their supply rails missing. It tends to put a lot of current through certain parts of the device because it's not switching correctly internally. So chances are this is um, what's causing the problem. So we'll start with that. So I've printed off part of the data sheet. And so what we're going to do here is just do a few basic checks. We'll start by seeing if the clock signal is there. So that's the external clock. It's going to be running at probably either 1 or 2 megahertz. I suspect it will be 1 megahertz on this machine. And that's dependent on the type of drive that you have fitted and whether it's single density or double density. So we'll power this back up. Look at pin 24. Let's move the camera so you can see the scope. And I'm going to put the scope probe onto pin 24. And that is indeed exactly one megahertz. So we are getting a clock. The next thing I'm going to do is look at the uh, raw data inputs. This is the raw data out of the drive and the raw data going into the controller chip. So that's pin 27. We can also look at pin 26, which is the uh, the, the day the recovered clock, so that's the um, the clock that's used to control the speed of the drive. So if you're not familiar with how these systems work, they kind of have a closed loop speed control system because of course it is important that they um, run at the uh, an exact speed relative to the data that's on the disk. Doesn't really matter exactly what the speed is as long as the system knows the rate at which data is being read from the disk. So you can't really take a disk from one machine, put it into another, if there was kind of an open loop speed control, or even a fairly precise closed loop speed control. So to make sure the data recovery keeps in step with the data on the disk, the data coming off the disk is used in a closed loop to control the speed at which the um, motor is spinning on the drive, so in other words, it's a closed loop feedback system. And um, that's where the recovered clock comes from. Now I booted this up and we are now getting the message on the screen saying it's trying to access drive A. And so if we press the B key on the keyboard, it should um, prompt the machine to try and read the uh, disk again. 
So I'll put the scope probe onto pin 27 of the floppy drive controller chip. Which is that pin. I'll now press the B key. And we're not getting any data at all. So there's nothing coming out of the drive. I suspect it's because the drive is not being properly initialized because the read write head isn't moving. Hopefully you can see it here, the read write head is still in the um, in the position where I pushed it to, it hasn't reset. So what I'm going to do is actually change the floppy drive controller chip. Uh, that's the most likely culprit. So I've got a replacement here. I'm not going to calibrate it, so there's a calibration process you need to go through with these devices. So I'm just going to swap the the IC and see what happens. Okay I've got the old device removed, I've got a replacement fitted so we'll try and power up the machine and see what happens. Okay so step forward, not if you notice that but the read write head actually moved to the proper position and also despite this having been turned off for a while we're now getting a message on the screen of the display let's turn the lights out so you can hopefully see it um, but this time it's saying um, read error on boot so it's now doing something different it's um, this message is in response to data that the machine is getting from the disk now it's only going to successfully read data from the disk or at least it's only going to successfully transfer data from the disk if it's able to see data on the disk. So I'll turn the lights back on. I'm going to go back to pin 27 of the floppy drive controller chip. So remember we didn't get anything here at all. This should be the raw data coming from the floppy drive. And notice this time we are getting data. It doesn't look quite right but I suspect this is just a case of the, um, the chip needing to be calibrated. As I say, they do need to be calibrated uh, whenever you replace them. That's what these pots are for. Okay, there are several other support devices on the floppy drive control. I'm just going to move the camera down a bit. So there are a number of support devices for the floppy drive controller chip. We have this device here, which is a WD2143. And if we look at the spec sheet for the WD1691, which is this device, these are helper chips for the floppy drive controller. The WD2143 is used to control the right precompensation. If you're not familiar with right precompensation, then if you go back and look at the uh, video I posted recently on the HP 9845. I explained the precompensation for the tape drive and it works in a very similar way for floppy disk uh, drives. It's there for the same reason and it's there to compensate for the close proximity of the adjacent signals on, on the uh, disk surface. Um, but this is calculated by an external device. We then have another device which is part of a phase lock loop control system and that is used to control uh, the, uh, the this is effectively the recovery clock the data recovery clock for the data read and this is derived from the data coming from the uh, floppy disk and then it's used to uh, basically control through this charge pump there's a pump up pump down uh, signal output from the WD1691 and that's used to increase or decrease the voltage on this pin. This is a voltage controlled oscillator. So that's used to control the rate of the clock that's being used to control the data recovery. So that's kind of a closed loop based on the data that's coming off the disk. So we are now getting data coming out of this controller. Um, but you'll notice there are some pots on here and that's the pots we can see on the edge of the board and they're used to set the operating range of these various ICs. Now this could of course also be that the data on the floppy disk itself is corrupt. Um, I don't really know which is the case just yet, but we are getting nearer. 
and each time I've booted up since I've changed that device it has come up with the same message saying read error on boot. Um, on top of this what I want to do now is to try and reset this before if you recall when I try to reset it with the power applied it wouldn't boot back up and hopefully you can see now it has successfully tried to reboot so it does look like we're getting a lot further now than we were so the next thing I'll do I said I'm running out of time really with this machine it's taken a lot longer than it should have done but I would like to get it at least to the point where it will try to boot from floppy disk before I return it to the owner so what I'm going to do now is go through the rest of the floppy drive control system try and figure out where this um, error is coming from it might just need the uh, device recalibrating could be one of the support devices is not working correctly might be the clock um, generation device isn't working or the phase lock loop control is not doing what it's supposed to uh, but what I'll do is I'll go through the, uh, this part of the system, try and figure out what's going on, and then in the next video hopefully we'll be able to get a bit further through the boot process.